this is this is our sort of batch of uh, things that you didn't get to see that uh, some of some of them I'm glad you did and some of them I, I wish you would have uh, time permitting but it wasn't so here we go okay now this is actually this now this wasn't a deleted level this was uh, the prototype that the team put together um, I don't even know what the date on this is but but you know three years uh, f ago and. Uh, it was really just to get, get the basic mechanics, not even tuned or anything, but you know, you could run, you could swim, you could swing, and uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you look at this level a little bit, you'll see, uh, we certainly didn't reuse uh, any of the main art, but you'll see kind of like that shot there is sort of the precursor to some of the shots we have in the game, uh, the rope swinging mechanic. And a lot of this, so you'll recognize, uh, if, if you've played the game and remember the game, uh, you, you'll recognize some of the like the, the the level when you pull into Athens at first. This this bottom section is based on that, um, and the whole cliffs that you climb here. We actually just sort of ripped these out directly from the demo, <clears throat> and uh, built the cliffs level, the cliffs of madness or the cliffs of insanity. I forget what we ended up calling it. Um, God, it's amazing to see this little guy running around. He looks so not like Kratos. Um, that guy there uh, was the original Cyclops who's dying, um, who just never really looked like a Cyclops. He just looked like a big guy with a stick. And then this was the, the room, the, the only room that we built that was like the final room, and everything else was kind of rough. And I remember seeing this and going, everybody saw this and said, man, this looks awesome. And then we were like, yeah, but how in the hell are we gonna get, you know, all the levels in the game looking as good as that? And uh, I don't know if we ended up getting them all looking as good as that, but I think we came a lot closer than I thought we would. This, this level is pretty cool. This was our test level for uh, the Icarus wing. So, and it, you know, it, it, Icarus and uh, Daedalus. Um, the Icarus story where he flew too close to the to the sun with the, with the wings that he had made and the wax melted and he fell to his death. That was sort of the the the, the inspiration for the mechanic. And I, I still love this. I, I absolutely wish this had made it into the game. Um, we just, you know, it really came down to time and going, you know what, let's focus, let's get our fighting really good and let's get our platforming better and let's get our puzzles working and, and maybe we can come back to this and as is often the case, you just never have the chance to. So I'd love to see something like this, uh, you know, in future God of War titles because um, I think it's a great, uh, it's just fun. I mean, it's fun to fly around and what was cool about this is it wasn't just a flying level, it was you know, you can land and you can walk around and it, it was very a seamless experience versus, you know, now it's time for the flying level. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, I look at this now and I'm like, damn, we should have gotten that in. That would be awesome. These were the original harpies. They were a lot bigger. They still read better. They look awesome, but uh, we just realized we needed more of like a bat-like, small, like little annoyance enemy. Um, these guys played like the skeletons, basically, flying versions of the skeletons. and. There just wasn't much of a difference in gameplay, so we ended up kind of shrinking them down and making them bats. And this was what we call the Mounting the Titan level, which is Kronos the Giant Titan in the desert. And sadly, right now, the only way you get on the Titan is uh, through a movie. And originally, this was how it was going to be. And you see this big, it's like a big watermelon in the background. That's actually Kronos. Uh, and Tobin, the designer, he's got him kind of moving towards the player and those things that are falling are like mountains that are crumbling and stuff so it's kind of like Kronos is, is rushing towards the player crawling and you're trying to run ahead of him in these platforming sections so that you can ultimately jump onto the structure that's on his back and that'll lead you up to the temple and I still love that idea I, I really really wish we could have done it and it was just we showed this to the, the tech guys and we showed it to the artists and they were just like dude that's that's going to take forever this, this is, was the original boss. There was a boss that originally, um, uh, look at that, that's awesome, that originally guarded Pandora's box. And again, we just didn't have time. And I know it's lame that uh, that's the one thing I regret about the Pandora design is that there are no bosses that uh, guard the box. You have the Minotaur boss down below, and then we've got this conveyor belt section, and that's kind of it. And we just, we just ran out of time. And this was originally pretty cool. It was... You know, you had this moving platform up above, you had this giant kind of harpy vulture in the center uh, that was guarding the box. You And she had these eggs scattered all around the level. And in order to sort of entice her to fly around, you'd have to go find her eggs and break the eggs. And you'd kind of take the little baby birds inside and you'd kind of carry them around and use them as bait. And again, not only was it kind of a cool mechanic because you were having to get you were slower as you carried these things around, uh, but also I think it really helped with the character of Kratos. I mean, here he is, you know, cracking open eggs and ripping out little infant birds and using them for his own uh, 
his own desires uh, and really pissing off this mama bird I thought was pretty cool. So here's just another quick idea. These are almost like little sketches for levels, you know, where you, you have a big open environment and then you've got the walls come down and it becomes a maze and you either do something and the walls come back up or it's on a timer. I mean, we did tons of these things, you know, where I have an idea or a designer would have an idea and it was like, you know, try, try something like this. So this level uh, is actually a level that we, we went so far as that we showed the press, we got it in magazines, and, and this, this was really a hard cut for us to make, um, and for, especially for me to make. Um, I, I love the mechanic of it, and I love the, the platforming and the concept. And the concept was that you're riding this elevator, and um, you know if you get knocked off, um, obviously you'll die. And if you get off the elevator, the idea was it was gonna originally be being chased by this massive sandstorm. And the elevator was really the only thing. It was sort of a magical elevator that protected you from the sand. And if you got off the elevator, um, the elevator would bypass you and the sandstorm would engulf you and kill you. And we just, the two things we didn't have time to do is we didn't have time to tune it and we didn't have time to build the sandstorm. But what I loved was this whole idea of, you know, getting off the elevator and having to catch back up with it. Um, so, you know, you, you'd have these little forks in the road and either you'd be forced, like coming up, you'd be forced to get off the elevator uh, or you could choose different paths. Um, and if you took one path, it was more combat heavy. One path was more platform heavy. And as you can see, I mean, we had this pretty much finished from a standpoint of uh, the art and the setup, but we were missing the big sandstorm and we were missing the... Uh, the tuning time to really make this fun, and so it ended up getting cut. This I love. This was great. This is great. I love this for the elevator. Now it gets smaller. I guess we, we talked about putting this in the actual, uh, obviously they suck. Whoever played this couldn't keep up with the elevator, but that was the whole idea, trying to keep up with the elevator. So it's tough. It's really tough when you have to cut ideas that you're really passionate about out of the game, but uh, you, you do so so you can make the other ideas that you do have in the game shine even brighter. So. It's sort of a constant process, or it's a constant aspect of the process that's just a really tough thing that you go through, but uh, I think it's worth it because it makes the overall product better. All right, so those are the deleted levels of it, and we're gonna go check out some of the original designs of Chris before he became a red, um, naked Spartan, quote unquote. And I guess now I can start rant. Oh, it's a video? Some of the earlier characters that uh, that had been played around with, um, uh, some of them again just didn't feel right for the for the uh, for the time period. Uh, some of them either felt overdressed or felt too fantasy. A lot of the concepts too got got very detailed. There were lots of flowing things and there were lots of hair and there was lots of, of things that if we had to just model it, it probably would have been a little bit tougher to, to pull it off. There was one character I remember when I first saw it that had kind of a, um, almost kind of a, a tribal feel to it, a very kind of African feel to it, uh, which I thought was, was pretty cool. Uh, didn't say Greek, but I, at, the, at the same time when I looked at that, I thought, you know, that would be a pretty cool character to work with. We went through images of the lone wolf kind of characters where uh, you might have a hero with a little baby or a dog on his back. Um, so just to kind of give something different, you know, about the character and something that you can kind of relate to. One of the original concepts behind the hero for God of War was to come up with a guy who was, his, his whole face was encased in a mask. And we thought that going with a mask would be, uh, you know, being able to paint his face in broader strokes so that when you were playing the game, he still had a lot of personality. You could still sort of read that when you saw the mask. But when we actually got it in the game, it ended up feeling very soulless, and it didn't feel like the guy had a personality. That was all, that was always one of the big, big elements that we were dealing with. Um, you know, and it was difficult because, um, you know, we would often hear, it's not Greek enough. <laughs> and we're like, what does that mean? I'm using an actual... Uh, you know, sometimes because we would use it, we would take it right from a Greek, um, some Greek sources, you know, and it was, it was very Greek. But I think what we really started seeing was, okay, no, it's not, um, it's not Greek enough according to what the general public knows. And, and that's kind of what we, what we had to go towards. Uh, these are, again, uh, very traditional. Some of these were very traditional kind of Greek images. And again, again, the more traditional it got, the more 
armor we put on him, the more he lost his, uh, his individual. Every time we put something on, you know, Dave felt like, oh, he doesn't look brutal anymore. And, and we started realizing brutal also kind of related to the primal part of him, you know. And, and so we did spend a lot of time going through that, and the, uh, in the end we ended up still taking his clothes off. And that's what we were with, so. When I first saw this from Charlie, it was the first time that I really saw the brutal nature and the violent nature and the sort of the animalistic quality that would really become the foundation for Kratos. And I think starting to see these images was just like um, sort of confirmation that, th that this idea could really work. And instead of giving him a, a traditional sword, uh, going with these sort of chain blades was going to be much more dynamic and fluid and really fun to play with. The main goal for the character in the game was always to create someone that uh, looked uh, really brutal and really nasty and really violent. Instead of sort of going down the traditional route of a iconic Greek hero with a, with a plume helmet and the, uh, the skirt and the toga and the sandals, we wanted someone who really made the player feel like he was being able to unleash his dark side. So the idea was always, how can we make him look more brutal? How can we make him look more violent and impulsive and nasty and that desire always superseded sort of historical accuracy so while you look at this guy he may not totally feel at home in ancient greece from a costume standpoint uh, i think he achieves the greater purpose which is to give players a character that they can play who really does let them just go nuts and uh, unleash the nasty fantasies they have in their head Yeah, so Kratos is pretty important in the sense that he kind of um, was an inspiration to the anti-hero kind of perspective. Playing as a hero who kind of has darkness still in his soul, in a way. Uh, kind of a kind of a madman in, in, in 
and so on and so forth. I did that piece even the level, the design wasn't solid yet. So, but my, my own uh, interpretation, I was thinking it's like things are like, there's no gravity, but at the same time, things are like kind of shifting all the time. And this infinite distance in the back, things are flying, falling, exploring. The Mount Olympus, that one, that one particularly, we don't, it's not for the game art. It's more like, okay, we want to talk about Mount Olympus. So where's the image? That kind of thing. The goal of the, the world of God of War was really to create um, a place that felt like, you know, a giant theme park ride, you know, or a, a giant set on one of these great high adventure movies and um, places that you really want to explore and, and spend time in and really feel like you were having this grand adventure. And I think these guys, you know, week after week continually uh, were able to come up with set pieces and ideas that they, they just top themselves constantly and continually. And they've really given us this great world to play in, and uh, I, I think they do an amazing job. And I'm, I'm so grateful as a player that I get to actually play in this space.